in differential geometry. A Riemannian manifold or Riemannian space is a real smooth manifold M equipped with an inner product on the tangent space at each point that varies smoothly from point to point in the sense that if X and Y are vector fields on M, then is a smooth function. The family of inner products is called a Riemannian metric. These terms are named after the German mathematician Bernhard Riemann. The study of Riemannian manifolds constitutes the subject called Riemannian geometry. A Riemannian metric makes it possible to define various geometric notions on a Riemannian manifold, such as angles, lengths of curves, areas, curvature, gradients of functions and divergence of vector fields. Introduction. In 1828, Carl Friedrich Gauss proved his theorem or egregium, establishing an important property of surfaces. Informally, the theorem says that the curvature of a surface can be determined entirely by measuring distances along paths on the surface. That is, curvature does not depend on how the surface might be embedded in three-dimensional space. See Differential Geometry of Surfaces. Bernhard Riemann extended Gauss's theory to higher dimensional spaces called manifolds in a way that also allows distances and angles to be measured, and the notion of curvature to be defined, again in a way that was intrinsic to the manifold and not dependent upon its embedding in higher dimensional spaces. Albert Einstein used the theory of Riemannian manifolds to develop his general theory of relativity. In particular, his equations for gravitation are constraints on the curvature of space. Overview The tangent bundle of a smooth manifold M assigns to each fixed point of M a vector space called the tangent space, and each tangent space can be equipped with an inner product. If such a collection of inner products on the tangent bundle of a manifold varies smoothly as one traverses the manifold, then concepts that were defined only pointwise at each tangent space can be extended to yield analogous notions over finite regions of the manifold. For example, a smooth curve alpha, 0, 1, m has tangent vector alpha in the tangent space trademark at any point t0, and each such vector has length alpha, where denotes the norm induced by the inner product on trademark. The integral of these lengths gives the length of the curve alpha. Smoothness of alpha for t in 0, 1 guarantees that the integral L exists and the length of this curve is defined. In many instances, in order to pass from a linear algebraic concept to a differential geometric one, the smoothness requirement is very important. Every smooth submanifold of Rn has an induced Riemannian metric G. The inner product on each tangent space is the restriction of the inner product on Rn. In fact, as follows from the Nash embedding theorem, all Riemannian manifolds can be realized this way. In particular one could define Riemannian manifold as a metric space which is isometric to a smooth sub-manifold of Rn with the induced intrinsic metric, where isometry here is meant in the sense of preserving the length of curves. This definition might theoretically not be flexible enough but it is quite useful to build the first geometric intuitions in Riemannian geometry. Riemannian manifolds as metric spaces Usually a Riemannian manifold is defined as a smooth manifold with a smooth section of the positive definite quadratic forms on the tangent bundle. Then one has to work to show that it can be turned to a metric space. If gamma, A, B, M is a continuously differentiable curve in the Riemannian manifold M, then we define its length L in analogy with the example above by with this definition of length. Every connected Riemannian manifold M becomes a metric space in a natural fashion. The distance D between the points X and Y of M is defined as D equals I N F L. Gamma is a continuously differentiable curve joining X and Y. Even though Riemannian manifolds are usually curved, there is still a notion of straight line on them. The geodesics. These are curves which locally join the points along shortest paths. Assuming the manifold is compact, any two points X and Y can be connected with a geodesic whose length is D. Without compactness, this need not be true. 
For example, in the punctured plane R2, 0, the distance between the points N is 2, but there is no geodesic realizing this distance. Properties in Riemannian manifolds, the notions of geodesic completeness, topological completeness and metric completeness are the same. That each implies the other is the content of the hopf renau theorem. Riemannian metrics. Let M be a differentiable manifold of dimension N. A Riemannian metric on M is a family of inner products such that, for all differentiable vector fields X, Y on M, defines a smooth function MR. In other words, a Riemannian metric G is a symmetric tensor that is positive definite greater than zero for all tangent vectors X0. In a system of local coordinates on the manifold M given by N real valued functions X1, X2, Xn. The vector fields give a basis of tangent vectors at each point of M. Relative to this coordinate system, the components of the metric tensor are, at each point P, equivalently. The metric tensor can be written in terms of the dual basis dx1, dxn, of the cotangent bundle as endowed with this metric. The differentiable manifold is a Riemannian manifold. Examples with identified with equals, the standard metric over an open subset URN is defined by, let be a Riemannian manifold and NM be a submanifold of M. Then the restriction of G to vectors tangent along N defines a Riemannian metric over N. More generally, let F, MN, NN plus K be an immersion. Then, if N has a Riemannian metric, F induces a Riemannian metric on M via pullback. This is then a metric. The positive definiteness follows on the injectivity of the differential of an immersion. Let be a Riemannian manifold. H, Mn plus Kn K be a differentiable map and Qn be a regular value of H is surjective for all P H minus 1. Then H minus 1 M is a submanifold of M of dimension N. Thus H minus 1 carries the Riemannian metric induced by inclusion. In particular, consider the following map. Then, 0 is a regular value of H and is the unit sphere Sn minus 1 Rn. The metric induced from Rn on Sn minus 1 is called the canonical metric of Sn minus 1. Let M1 and M2 be two Riemannian manifolds and consider the Cartesian product M1 times M2 with the product structure. Furthermore, let pi 1, m1 times m2 m1 and pi 2, m1 times m2 m2 be the natural projections. For m1 times m2, a Riemannian metric on m1 times m2 can be introduced as follows. The identification allows us to conclude that this defines a metric on the product space. The torus S1 times times S1 equals Tn possesses for example a Riemannian structure obtained by choosing the induced Riemannian metric from R2 on the circle S1, R2 and then taking the product metric. The torus Tn endowed with this metric is called the flat torus. Let G0, G1 be two metrics on M, then, is also a metric on M. The pullback metric if F, Mn is a differentiable map and a Riemannian manifold, then the pullback of Gn along F is a quadratic form on the tangent space of M. The pullback is the quadratic form F asterisk Gn on trademark defined for V, WTPM by where DF is the push forward of V by F. The quadratic form F asterisk Gn is in general only a semi-definite form because df can have a kernel. If f is a diffeomorphism, or more generally an immersion, then it defines a Riemannian metric on M, the pullback metric. In particular, every embedded smooth submanifold inherits a metric from being embedded in a Riemannian manifold, and every covering space inherits a metric from covering a Riemannian manifold. Existence of a metric Every paracompact differentiable manifold admits a Riemannian metric. To prove this result, let M be a manifold and alpha I a locally finite atlas of open subsets U of M and diffeomorphisms onto open subsets of R and let tau alpha be a differentiable partition of unity subordinate to the given atlas. 
then define the metric G on M by where G can is the Euclidean metric. This is readily seen to be a metric on M. Isometries let M be two Riemannian manifolds, and F, M N be a diffeomorphism. Then, F is called an isometry, if or pointwise moreover, a differentiable mapping F. Mn is called a local isometry at Pm if there is a neighborhood Um, Pu, such that F, Uf is a diffeomorphism satisfying the previous relation. Riemannian manifolds as metric spaces. A connected Riemannian manifold carries the structure of a metric space whose distance function is the arc length of a minimizing geodesic. Specifically, let be a connected Riemannian manifold. Let C, A, B, M be a parametrized curve in M, which is differentiable with velocity vector C. The length of C is defined as by change of variables. The arc length is independent of the chosen parametrization. In particular, a curve A, B, M can be parametrized by its arc length. A curve is parametrized by arc length if and only if for all. The distance function d, m times m, 0, infinity, is defined by where the infimum extends over all differentiable curves gamma beginning at pm and ending at qm. This function d satisfies the properties of a distance function for a metric space. The only property which is not completely straightforward is to show that d equals 0 implies that p equals q. For this property, one can use a normal coordinate system, which also allows one to show that the topology induced by d is the same as the original topology on m. Diameter The diameter of a Riemannian manifold m is defined by the diameter as invariant under global isometries. Furthermore, the heiner borel property holds for Riemannian manifolds. M is compact if and only if it is complete and has finite diameter. Geodesic completeness A Riemannian manifold M is geodesically complete if for all Pm. The exponential map is defined for all, i.e., if any geodesic starting from P is defined for all values of the parameter Tr. The Hopfrinau theorem asserts that M is geodesically complete if and only if it is complete as a metric space. If M is complete, then M is non-extendable in the sense that it is not isometric to an open proper submanifold of any other Riemannian manifold. The converse is not true, however, there exist non-extendable manifolds which are not complete.